Hey guys, Big Rat 3 Tennis here again with another DVD review. I did three reviews in one video, three minutes per DVD review, so let's get this started. Nine of Appreciation, Road to the Title, and the Final Showdown. Okay, let's start with Nine of Appreciation, which I saw like weeks ago. This was a decent show, not great. I would personally say it's the weakest out of the Air of Honor Begins, Round Robin Challenge, and Road to the Title, basically the first four shows. Uh, so let's quickly run through this down. Opener, basic the hit squad squash, uh, star and quarter. Jay Briscoe, Tony Mamluk, good, short, not so great, because it was too short, but two and a quarter. Divine Storm versus Joey Master, Chris in New York. I don't remember this tag match at all, but I remember giving it two and three quarter. I'm just being straight with you. Uh, James Maritato versus Xavier versus Good Andrew. Okay, Xavier fucked this up big time. This could have been easily a three star, three and a quarter star match, but Xavier just kept botching. It was horrific to watch. He really, 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 really hurt the match. Two or three quarters. This could be very... And it was only six minutes, but I thought these guys had great chemistry. But Xavier just fucked it up. Low key versus AJ Styles. Four stars. Match of the night. One of the best matches of the year. Uh, low key. For those of you who don't know, for, I believe, every show up until Unscripted, basically their first seven shows, he had a four star match or higher every time. Yes. Can you say MVP? This was a great match. AJ Styles debut. I thought it would have been a little better, actually. But it was still, I still, come on, four stars. You can't really be disappointed with four stars. Let's look at the Carnage Crew versus John and Marcos. Eh, okay. Just a bit, too bit long, of an elongated squash. Star and a half. Donovan Morgan versus Christopher Daniels. I was kind of bored through this one. Donovan Morgan has talent. But I don't know. These guys just didn't watch. Did, these guys just didn't have great chemistry in my eyes. Three stars. The Heartbreak Gauntlet. This was too long. Uh, American Dragon, Spanky, Michael Shane, Polona, and John Hope. They uh, they highlighted the first match and then they showed the full match of the rest of the matches, which just seems stupid to me. And after this match, you had every Ring of Honor guy competing in the tournament cut a promo why they're going to win. Literally every single one. Well, not every single one. 80% of them. But this was this was just too long. Three and a quarter. It was still very good because you had some great stuff, some great spots, especially early on. But it was just, it was just too long. It was like 30, 40 minutes. Next we have Eddie Guerrero and Amazing Red versus uh, the SAT of Joe Jose and Joel Maximo. Uh, this was a this is good three and a quarter, three and a half starts, which is too short. It was only twelve minutes, but it was still fine. And then Eddie Guerrero, this was his last night in Ring of Honor, and then he had a short match with Brian Excel that meant nothing. That was like thirty seconds long. I'm gonna get that in the day. But Eddie Guerrero had a great promo. I could I could barely hear half of it. To be honest, I, the good from what I heard was great, but I couldn't hear half of it because the production values are so god awful in these first few shows. They are god awful. But this was still an okay show. You know, I got a four star match on here. You got a few three star matches on here. Uh, some good stuff. I'm gonna give this show like a seven point seven five. A seven point five. It's a good show. Just I wouldn't really go out of your way to get it. But you know, it's it's nice having, so to speak. If you're a low-key fan, you should get it just, just for his match. Next we get Road to the Title. I saw this literally today. This is the tournament after the show where the winner would go to this show, crowning the champion, uh, to crown the first ring of champion. Now, I haven't been complaining about the show. Why the fuck does, do you start out with Block C, and then Block A, then back to Block C, then back to Block A, then all of Block D, then all of Block B? It seemed completely unorganized because you had two matches per block. And the winner of each block would advance to the full way. But it just seemed completely unorganized. You started at C. They started with block C with one of the matches. And then they went to one of the matches of block A. Then they went to one of the matches back to block C. And one of the matches back to block A. And then all of the matches of block D. Then all of the matches of block B. Why go C, A, D, B? Why go in that order? It makes no sense. Just go A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. What's so hard about that? It looked completely fucked up. And especially if you go to the chapter menu, the chapter menu divides it by block. On the first page, it says block A. Paul London versus Spanky, Johnny Storm versus Jody Flesh. Then block B, then block C, then block D. It's so fucked up. But anyways, uh, uh, I kind of have to go out of order here. Let's start with block A since these were the second and third matches, I believe. Uh, Paul London versus Spanky, decent little match, two or three quarter stars, just too short, only like 10 minutes. You can tell if these guys had a, I don't know if they ever did have a full time, full throttle match Ring of Honor, it could be epic. Uh, Johnny Storm versus Jordy Flesh, this in my opinion was the best match of the first round matches. Uh, three and a quarter stars, this was a lot of, it was only five minutes. But God, it, I'll admit, it was a spot fest. 
But it was a fun spot. The crowd was so into this match. They were crazily into this match. And this match was so much fun. I marked out in every single spot. So I'm going to give this three and a quarter stars just for that. Uh, Scoot Andrews, Christopher Daniels, star three quarter. Not much. It was like three minutes long. AJ Styles for Jerry Lynn. Disappointing for me. I thought this would be a lot better. See, all these matches are like six minutes or less. And this is the last of the first time matches. And then when you get to this, and this match is like 18 minutes, it's hard to digest. Because six minute matches, like, they get... Yeah, I have gum now. Okay, so, I thought the match would be a lot better. It was still three stars. I thought it was good. But, like, in six minute matches, they kind of, like, throw everything at you at the beginning. Or in these type of matches, they kind of build to it. And you kind of get impatient after seeing so many matches where they throw it at you in the beginning. Uh, Biohazard for American Dragon, star and a half, very short, Doug Williams for Jay Briscoe, very short, two and a quarter. Loki Prince Nana, pretty much nothing, probably the worst match in the show, star and a half. Uh, Xavier versus Amazing Red, very underrated, very fun, two and three quarter stars. Then, a tag team scramble where all they did was brawl each other, it wasn't even really a match. Simply Luscious versus Sumi Sakai, star and three quarter, bad, 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 women's match. I didn't like it, it was only four minutes, but I still didn't like it. Okay, and then we go to the finals. Paul London versus Jody Flesh. I mean, Spanky versus Jody Flesh. Fun match. Two and three quarter. I wish this had gotten more time. Uh, Christopher Daniels versus AJ Styles. Three and three quarter. Very good stuff. American Dragon, Doug Williams. Three and a half. Excellent, excellent technical wrestling match. And Loki versus Amazing Red. The match of the night. Four stars. Awesome, 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 awesome. The best opening to a match you will ever see in your lives. I promise you that. This match has the best opening I've ever seen in any professional wrestling match ever. The 30 seconds, mostly due to the crowd, but still. I'm going to give the show an 8. has a 4-star match, a 3-and-3-quarter star match, a 3-and-a-half-star match, and all the 2-and-3-quarter star matches that I listed were really fun matches that should have been given more time. You have a lot of fun with the show. It's 14 matches, and it feels like 14 matches, but it's easy to sit through. All the matches are really short, except for the finals. It's a very easy show to sit through. And it's fun, you know, you have a lot of fun with a lot of a lot of the uh, tournament matches. So I do recommend, I'm going to be selling this one, I do recommend picking up Road to the title. It is a lot of fun to sit through. The final showdown, I like this just as much as Manhattan Mayhem, I'm not going to say I like it more, but I like it just as much. This show is filmed right after Man Manhattan Mayhem and right before Nowhere to Run, so you can kind of see where it's kind of a forgotten show. Alex Shea vs. Roderick Strong. Excellent, excellent, excellent opener. Three and a half stars. A lot of fun. I really liked it. Matt Stryker versus Matt Chicago Superstar. Basically a squash. An extended squash two. Star and three quarter. Samoa Joe vs. Jack Evans versus Ebatora versus Delirious. This is one of the funniest matches I've ever seen in Ring of Honor history. This had Chikara comedy in it, and I laughed a lot. A lot, a lot. It'll have Chikara comedy, and you'll like it. You won't criticize it. It has a lot of, lot of Chikara stuff, but it's really funny and really fun to watch. Good match, too. Three and a quarter stars. B. Jormer and Jimmy Jacobs versus CM Punk and A. Steel. Three and a half. Fun tag match. It would be better, but I remember it was Punk ate the pin. And at the next show, Punk's going to fight Jimmy Raven in a cage match. And you're going to have him job to Jimmy Jacobs in a tag team title match that means nothing. That's incredibly fucking stupid, Ring of Honor. Morons. Jimmy Ray versus Matt Seidel. Fun match again. Three and a half stars. A lot of fun. Really liked it. Imagine we get us some Chad Collier versus Cole Cabana and Doug Williams. They call this a dream match. This was not a dream match, but this was still pretty good. Three and a quarter stars. Just could have been given more time. Doug Williams has great chemistry with Nigel McGuinness, and I mean great chemistry with Nigel McGuinness. Austin Aries versus James Gibson. This match was too long. It was like 25 minutes. The ending was horrible. Uh, James Gibson gives Austin Aries the, what does he call it? Like the triangle, like the body scissors off the, on the top rope. Like while Aries is on the top rope, he's giving Aries the body scissors. And then Aries, while Gibson is like on him, just jumps off the top rope and lands on Gibson. And he gets the three. I thought that was such a weak finish. I, could, I wasn't into the matches as much as I wanted to be. And Gibson's one of my favorite Ring of Honor wrestlers of all time. But I was dazing in and out of this. Had some great spots. Just a little too long in my opinion. And I really did not like the ending. So that's why I'm getting three and three quarter. Even though it probably deserves like four and a quarter. Homicide for Danielson in a cage. A little disappointing. Four stars. Still excellent. Match of the night, great match, but for a Ring of Honor cage match, you expect a lot, lot more, and I really didn't get that from this match. It was still awesome, four stars. It probably doesn't deserve four stars, but these guys brought the intensity. They were intense. You could tell they hated each other. They sold well. They told a great story in the ring, and the ending where Homicide shakes Daniels' hand, gives him a hug, then gives him a gringo cutter. 
Beautiful. I mean, I forgot. He gave him a cutter. Yeah, yeah, I said it right. So yeah, this was a excellent show. I'm gonna give this a nine. I highly recommend picking this show up. It's a forgotten show. Not many people remember that this show exists because it came after Manhattan Mayhem, one of the best Ring of Honor shows of all time, and before Nowhere to Run, the second best Ring of Honor show of 2005. But pick this up. This is an excellent, excellent show. The final showdown. Very underrated. Very forgotten. I really like the show. So again, nine, eight. I'm still on this one. And 7.5, 7.75. Hey, that's all I have for today. I'm going to probably play some WCW NWO Revenge. And then tomorrow, I'm going to watch Crowning a Champion. Okay? I'm Big Red 3, 10. And I'm out, guys. See ya.